part two of the series on the Bingham Project's takedown recurve bow that I'm working on. So today we're going to work on putting together, the, cutting out the patterns, if you will, and then building the form for the laminating press that the limbs are going to go into. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Stick around, hit that like and subscribe. All right, so in the first video, I mentioned that I'm probably gonna do the heat box and then do the laminating press. And as you can see, here's what happened after church Sunday when I went to the hardware store. Okay, um, we need two full red sheets of half inch plywood to make the heat box. And they're like over 70 bucks a sheet now. New rule is best. We gotta come up with some other method for the heat box because I'm not paying for two sheets of plywood for 70 something dollars each. So we gotta come up with something else. So yeah, so price is just way too much. So we're gonna, gonna do a different method. Been on the Trad Gang, talking to some guys there, give me some tips on what to do. So I got some ideas, so we'll show you what we're gonna do about that when we get to that spot. So I changed gears and decided to focus on the laminating press. So I've got, I already had some lumber that I had for this. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got the plans that Bingham provides in these projects. And first thing, I've got some parchment paper and I'm just gonna tape this down the plans. I'm gonna trace over these plans so I can cut them out on the parchment paper and then kind of move that to some poster board, something a little bit sturdier and then cut that out. So I've got the plans copied to, or the templates, if you will, copied to some poster board. And I'm gonna use that as my template. I'm gonna get that ready to go. And then I'm gonna explain to you what we're doing about how we built up the laminations to build this press, if you will. All right, I think that's good enough on here now so that I can basically cut this out, cut this out right here, and then I'll use that to lay on the poster board so I get something stronger, trace it on the poster board. At that point, I will use that as a guide. Go ahead and glue up my lands, but basically I need to know where all this is going so I know where I can put all my screws because what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay all this stuff up on our boards here. And I got a uh, half inch, I got a three quarter inch and a half inch. And here's the thing, the plans call for a half inch board that you're gonna cut up to, to around 12 by 30 inches. And you put the half inches together, four of them, laminate them together, you got two inches close. Not quite two inches, but close. But I'm building a uh, one and three quarter inch wide bow. So everything has to fit those dimensions. So instead of two inches, I gotta go for one, one and three quarter of an inch. Now. So I got a three quarter inch, I got a half inch, I got a half inch of the plywood, but then uh, it's still a little shy. So I was asking on the Trad Gang what to do and somebody, a couple people actually mentioned using RAM board. And it turns out my daughter had a sheet of RAM board, so I got it and checked it out. And sure enough, if I cut two sheets of RAM board in there and I'm gonna sandwich that in between the plywood as well, that brings me right to 1.75 inches, which is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and get this transferred over to the poster board, get things cut out. And go from there because the idea is once we start gluing these boards together, uh, once we start gluing these laminations together for this form, we're going to glue them and we're going to put screws in them. And I just need to make sure I'm not putting screws anywhere it's going to block any of the hardware, you know, anything close to where pins are going. These are the index pins, etc. So I just kind of need a guide for when I go to put the screws in. That's why I need to go ahead and get this done. So I've got my boards all laid out. This is for the laminating press. So I've got a half inch. I've got the RAM board, three quarter inch RAM board, and another half inch. I've got to lay it up in the order. I'm just gonna pick them up and lay them on here. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna put some glue on this thing and put the RAM board on here, get it set. I'm just gonna to try to keep these, this one set of corners lined up here real good. We're gonna end up trimming this a little bit when we're all done, so it's okay if the edges aren't quite perfect. And then once it's all glued up, then we're going to basically take some screws and we're gonna put a bunch of screws in here to, to hold it tight instead of clamping everything. And Hopefully that'll dry and cure in the next day or so, and then we'll finally cut the form out. So a couple things to keep in mind, my three quarter inch board is straight as an eagle or something, straight as something, whatever. But anyway, the half inch boards are a little bit bowed, so I'm doing opposite. So if this one's bowing that direction, the top is gonna bow in this direction. So I'm hoping they'll you know, fight against each other to kind of keep it straight and that three quarter board will hold them all straight, especially when it's all screwed in. So that's what we're gonna do now. So now I'm going to go ahead and screw this stuff down. I'm going to try to use drywall screws if that'll work. The reason I 
And then we got the template is because you don't, don't want to put screw holes in here where you're going to cut or where this hardware is going to go. So just trying to be uh, cognizant of that fact. So put your screw holes elsewhere. All right, so I've got this all glued and screwed together. And again, we're going to trim this once we're done uh, down to size. It's going to be a little bit, it's going to come trimming off there. So glued and screwed at this point. So we're going to let this cure. So now the form's all dried up. I've given it about 48 hours or so. Plus it's screwed together. Probably didn't need to give it that long what I'm doing, but uh, just didn't have time yesterday. So, but it's all uh, glued up. We're screwed together so what we're going to do first of all is obviously you see some edges here so we're going to trim this up to square everything up real quick on the table saw and then i'm going to check the measurements because i think we're going to bring it to uh we're going to drop it down about a half inch on each side i think to, to line it up with the right measurements for the template and then at that point i'm going to go ahead and draw the template on here basically and then we're going to do a rough cut on the bandsaw to get the template cut out Okay, so now that I've got my form cut to the right size and all the edges cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and take from this uh, parchment paper that I used. I was actually going to make a stronger template with a cardboard, but I'm going to go ahead and draw it out on here with this, and then we're going to rough cut this out on the bandsaw. Okay, you see I've got these all drawn out like such. We're going to extend this off so we know to cut, but before I do that, I want to get these holes marked. And so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to get the hardware and lay it on here and just poke a punch hole through that. And I'm just gonna find the center, roughly that hole. Go ahead and mark it right through there. Divot into the wood. Then I've got that marked back in. I'm gonna come back and find my divot holes and get those right in the center. That's pretty good. And I'm going to mark these holes in my form. Okay, I got my circles marked for the hardware. And I went ahead and extended the lines here for these curves. So the next part, we're going to cut this out on the bandsaw. And again, I'm not going to go right to the line. I'm going to give myself some room because what's important, especially on the bottom part of the form, is this needs to be a 90 degree uh, angle between the top and that side. It's got to be a perfect 90 degree cut because you want that limb to lay flat. So I'm going to get close to the line, but uh, I've got a couple thoughts on how I'm going to make sure it's perfect 90. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet, but i um, got some good ideas from the guys at Trad Gangs. Okay, so this is the bottom part of the mold and I went really close to the line, maybe touched it a couple times. I tried to stay just outside of it because you know how that bandsaw bay can kind of wiggle on you. This may, may, may not be a smooth, 90 degree surface with this so we're going to clean this up once we get done i'm going to go ahead and cut the, the top mold piece out next but i'm just trying to get close to the line but not all the way to it so i can take a sander to get a nice smooth edge or a planer or i mean a, a, a router I'm not sure if i'm going to use a uh, pattern sander or just the drum sander or the a router bit yet to uh, straighten this up but that's the idea right now all right so this is the top part of the mold so we're going to do the bottom part of the top mold and again i'm going to stay on that side of the line a little bit and just kind of come around that line just leave a little space so I can work it in with a sander or something after the fact. So that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Make sure you got a board underneath it to help prevent tear out. All right, so the form has been basic cut out, got the holes drilled for the mounting hardware. The next thing we're gonna do is go back and finish all this and get this to be a nice smooth curve and work our way out to the lines. All right, so on Bingham's video, what they do is they show you, basically once you cut next to the lines like I've done, they basically put you on a drum sander, either on a drill press or if you have a, a drum sander, and basically they have you kind of work it down to the line as far as sand everything down to get it right to the line that was drawn on there. So on the bandsaw, you don't want to cut the line so you don't want to go across it, but use a sander to get you close. So on Trad Gang, they were talking about using a router to do it with a flush cutting bit. And so the idea is you'd make like a quarter inch template, get that shaped the way you want it, and then take your router to do that, which I think is probably the best method to do it with. 
but I don't feel like my skill level's there with the router to be able to do that. I don't think my table is gonna be good enough. And if I took the router off the table, I just don't think I've got my gadget, so I don't wanna risk it. So I try to do the sanding method with my, my sander on the top piece, because that's not as important. And I felt like I got a good curve in this wood here, and I got, I checked it as 90 degree all the way across, so that's the most important part. So since I was successful with that, I'm gonna continue with that method uh, with the bottom piece, just sand it to the line uh, to get this mold finished. All right, so one thing, when you are doing this, you don't really wanna stop. You don't wanna just sit there and work on it because then you'll get those kind of humps in the surface. And so you wanna kind of keep it moving the whole time and work those areas. That's what I did with the top. That's what I'm gonna do with this. But I think I'll give me a nice uh, surface. And with my skill, I think that's probably the best option for me to do. So that's why I'm doing this way. All right, so now we got everything cut. The next thing is we're gonna take this Formica strip they gave us. And you can tell one side is really uh, slick and little, the other one's roughed up. That's gonna be our gluing surface. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use contact cement to get this Formica strip moved into place down here. We're going to spray both sides of contact cement, let it get a little tacky, and we're going to put this into place, try to keep this as straight as possible. And this is obviously longer than I need, but I think I'm just going to glue it in and then cut off the excess once it's glued in place so I know, you know I don't have the, any issues with it. So that's what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the contact cement on here. I've already shook this can up. I've cleaned both surfaces of this and the wood, and so now I'm going to just start spraying the cement down. Oh. All right, the can on this stuff said to let it sit for five minutes or so to get tacky. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna try to get this applied. I'm gonna leave it got a little on the end, so I'm gonna leave it hanging off on both sides, um, and then I'll just trim it once I'm once I'm done. I was wondering how good this was gonna adhere to this. It's actually adhering pretty good. Got hmm? lots of gaps. <sighs> now you get that glue all over too. Yeah, I know, but I can't. I guess I'll have to clean the glue up. It's almost like I need clamps or something to. He didn't do clamps, though. You know? Uh -huh. What the heck? <sighs> <laughs> Boy, it looked a lot easier when he did it on the video. It was like, boom, 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 stick it down, and it just stuck, right? So I was saying, there's a lot more pressure on this Formica than what was shown on the video. All right, well, this definitely was not like the video. The video, they kind of sprayed one thing, sprayed the other, popped the Formica in, it went right in, it stuck, and everything was great. This did not go like that, so I'm just going to tell you. So even after I held for several minutes, um, after I waited for the contact cement to get tacky and then put it down, I still had to wait several minutes to the point where... This curve part was bowing up on me really bad still. I feel like things were getting dry in there. I ended up uh, going with the filament tape like you're gonna do with the laminations when we're gonna put those down. But went ahead and my wife helped me wrap the, laminate, or the filament tape around it as I held each piece down. And then we ended up spraying a little bit more uh, contact cement in this area right here. And then just kind of taped this up and I think that'll do it. But now, because I had gloves on with contact cement a little bit, it's all kind of, instead of being a smooth surface, now it's it's got a bunch of dry, gonna have dry glue on it so I'm gonna have to figure out how to clean that up. All right I took some of my tape off of here. It hasn't been a full 24 hours so I'm gonna leave the tape on this curve because that was really really bad. I did trim the excess because this Formica strip was sticking out about this tall here and sticking out about that tall here and didn't know how to cut Formica so what I did is I basically put a block of wood here. I scored the Formica with a little, uh, oops, with a little boss cutter blade with a block of wood there carefully and I scored it several times and then what I got is a fine tooth hacksaw blade put it in the groove and just kind of slowly sawed it off and I got a good clean cut without uh, chipping the formica on both ends there so that's just some glue left over so 
what I did find is the excess glue I had built up on here, acetone cleans it up. So I haven't done that yet with all this, but yesterday I tried a little bit of acetone on some of the gobs of glue that was in here. So uh, the acetone is going to clean this all up when I'm done, but I'm going to give this a little bit longer before I take this tape off of here. But I did cut, you do have to have some spacers. When you go to match your hardware, you know, this hardware is going to get mounted like this as it goes between the molds, right? Or the two halves of the mold. And they want some spacers in between this and the mold. But they didn't indicate, you know, how thick they needed to be. So I think it's just a little room for that air hose, really. So I just had to resaw some, some wood that I had and, and got two match sets of thicknesses, all one thickness. This is a, a little bit thicker than this set, but it's just what I had. So uh, as long as this is on one side and this is on the other and they're matched, I think we'll be fine. And so those are ready to be put on, but I'm gonna wait till I get the tape off the mold and clean this mold up before I put that on. Yesterday, you know, when I, when I glued this for, piece of Formica on, Contact cement was getting everywhere. It was really hard to do, but it looks like it's stuck now. I've used the uh, filament tape to try to hold it in place overnight. It's, it's done that, but I was left with tons of goopy contact cement all up and down this piece of Formica. And the whole point of this is having a smooth surface. So what I did is I got some, um, close that here. I got some acetone that I got and some cotton balls. And I just kind of rubbed the acetone and got all it down. So it's really, really smooth now. Got all the, the glue cleaned off of this. So back to smooth surface. So that's good. Next thing we got to do is we got to drill the pins. So this, this mold can be for a 58 inch, a 60 inch, or a 62 inch takedown recurve. And so this is the 58, 60, and 62 positions. And you got to mark your center line. The blueprints tell you where to put these things. And basically what I'm doing now is I, I did a pilot hole. And now I'm going to take them down with the full... Um, size that I need to go into it. And you want to go so you're perpendicular to it, you know. Then we're going to take our pin and we're basically going to hammer it into that hole right there. So I'm going to get a mount to pound that in. All right, so basically they want these spacers on here. I want you to just nail them almost a finished nail, so hope it doesn't split the, the wood here. Be okay. And I'm gonna just put four nails in each one of these things. And uh... all right, so this is the finished laminating press. All the hardware is in place, the Formica strips in place, everything lines up well, looks good. Everything's marked for a 58 inch, 60, and a 62 inch based on where the pins are. You can move that to whatever hole you want, depending on the size. So again, now that this is built, this can be reused over and over and over again. So if I want to make another bow, which I'm going to, because my youngest daughter already told me, Dad, how much does it cost me if I buy the kit to make one just like yours to use your mold? So she's already thinking in terms of another one coming right after this. Anyway, this is it. Get an idea of what it's like to build the, the form, at least for the takedown recurve with the Begum Projects kit. And hang on till next week, and hopefully we'll have some more for you on this project. So hit that like and subscribe.